Hi and welcome back to a follow-up video regarding the DIY nickel plating. Pretty much three months ago we tried to nickel plate our CPU cooling block inside this Razer Blade 13 using this, whatever it's called in English, uh, nickel solution and I don't want to say that it worked out fine because the first attempt was terrible, second attempt was kind of okay looked okay but I was not sure about the thickness of the nickel layer and therefore I told you that we were going to do a follow-up video after like three months to see how things worked out with liquid metal because the thing is if you didn't watch the previous video I could just recommend that you watch it but the short summary is that if you want to use liquid metal on a laptop especially it can be critical, most of the cooling units inside there are using bare copper and the gallium and the indium inside the liquid metal can react with the bare copper and therefore it can look like it dried out. It didn't dry out but it will kind of react with the metals and to prevent that you usually use a nickel layer because nickel is working as a diffusion barrier. More details in the previous video but that's the quick summary. And now the question is after three months how did the liquid metal react? with our DIY nickel plating, how are the temperatures and performance of this Razer Blade 13. Inside here we have a Core i7-8565U CPU which is a 4 core 8 thread CPU. Nothing like really up to date but it's just what I use for like traveling and daily usage. It's a very small laptop, has long battery life and it's just fine for traveling for me therefore no need right now to upgrade. And yeah, <laughs> three months ago uh, we were applying the liquid metal and let's see what the performance looks like and what the temperatures look like right now. And by the way, because some people are really thinking I'm just putting chic on here for the videos, but prior to this video, like preparation wise, I was just cleaning up the table and like removing all the cat hair which was on here. And yeah, chic didn't want to go out of the way. Then I put her like on the side, cleaned the table came back into the room, Sheik was back. Maybe she didn't like... Okay, maybe she didn't like that I was talking about her so much about Sheik always being in the video. <laughs> okay, let's check out performance of the laptop. First impression of the idle temperatures. Hardware Info has been running for almost 10 minutes and Windows is just doing the random stuff in the background. Maximum temperature, meanwhile 53 degrees Celsius. That looks okay. Prior to applying liquid metal, the Cinebench R20 score was 1200 points. After applying liquid metal, 1581. That was quite a huge gain and maximum temperature was 80 degrees Celsius. First impression is that the result is kind of expected. We have a little bit higher temperature, 84 degrees Celsius max during PL2. You can see PL1 is 25, PL2 is 51 Watt. The previous video was shot in March, if I remember correctly, and now it's July, therefore quite a significant higher temperature inside my room, like 3-4 degrees more, and that could be perfectly in line here. But just running the PL1 power target right now with 25 watt and 66 degrees Celsius, that could be in line. 1592 points, therefore it even improved to last time. The previous score was 1581. Definitely no degradation and I would say this is within me measurement tolerance. Fortunately opening the Blade 13 is quite convenient for a laptop. It's like 10 small Torx screws and then we can remove the back. First look as expected. I mean as long as the heatsink is not removed cannot see anything. Okay, let's remove this. This feels a little bit sticky. Okay, not anymore. I think you can see this. There is not much liquid in the liquid metal. Looks pretty hard, it basically looks the same as if you would just apply it on the naked copper after this time. But there is not much like liquid left, it's the same on the CPU area and also on the GPU area. There is still like a li liquid part here on the left side on the GPU area, but the rest is basically, it looks like it dried. 
Unfortunately, this means that our DIY nickel plating was not that successful. As I said before, this is 100% the identical result to just applying liquid metal to bare copper and waiting for like half a year. It's exactly the same result. Interestingly, the performance does not suffer. It's something that also Gamers Nexus evaluated like a year ago when they were trying liquid metal after one year. So technically they applied it like two years ago and then checked after one year. And they also found out that even if it looks like this, the performance does not suffer. Like they had exactly the same performance, reapplied liquid metal after it looked like this and it was the same performance as previously. We will also reapply liquid metal to this heatsink. I think we will not clean it off simply because at a certain point the, the top surface area, the top surface uh, thickness is saturated, therefore not much more liquid metal can build up alloys and therefore this process of like drying out will stop after the second or the third reapplication. We will reapply it on the heatsink, we will clean off the CPU and also the GPU and yeah, we will just stay on this topic and probably in six months we will do another follow-up video, check again how it looks like after six months. But for now let's just uh, reapply liquid metal on heatsink and clean off CPU and GPU. Well, let's reapply the liquid metal. I think I already teasered this in one of the previous videos. This is TG Remove. It's a thermal interface material cleaner we made from thermal grease side. It was mainly made for liquid metal at the state when it is still liquid and therefore it works great. I think we did it in the Threader by Direct Eye video. Should also work if it's like a little bit hardened. Let's see. CPU is nice and shiny again. Successfully also removed the liquid metal from the GPU area. Unfortunately, we also removed our insulation area right here. Last time we protected those small SMDs from the liquid metal with an additional layer, but this is gone right now. Successfully also removed the liquid metal from the GPU area. Unfortunately, we also removed our insulation area right here. Last time we protected those small SMDs from the liquid metal with an additional layer, but this is gone right now. Roman, no problem. I have the solution. It started off with a joke, but now we have the real conformal coating in red. And now? Uh, I mean, you know it best, so you can start applying. Oh, okay. That's not what I meant. Oh, uh, sorry. Laptop is assembled again. We will just run a quick test again, compare temperature and performance, see if there is any difference to the previous run we did before reapplying the liquid metal. Shouldn't be any difference, I think. Just one more word about uh, TG Shield, the conformal coating. If you're going to use this, you can hear there is a ball inside that's to keep everything nice and mixed. Make sure you shake it before usage and to be more clear, this is really like a conformal coating and it doesn't contain any metal particles which can be in like normal nail polish 
which theoretically can make it like conductive or capacitive. This is not inside there and the operating temperature is much different. This can sustain up to 110 degrees Celsius all day long, which is something a normal nail polish wouldn't be able to do. And therefore, if you're going to look for something like this for liquid metal operation, then you can use this in the future once it's available. So far, pretty much no difference. 83 degrees Celsius on core zero and core three. Previously, we had 84 degrees Celsius. That's almost measurement tolerance, but let's wait for the final result. Final result, say the same. I mean, it's like four points difference, but that's measurement tolerance. This means that I'm not so satisfied with the DIY nickel plating, at least the way we did it previously. That was without using any kind of current. I also have a different nickel sulfate solution. I'm not sure what it is. I will have to look it up, but there is a different way we, are, we can do like electroplating. And that's something I personally didn't use yet, but I have the stuff right here. We can test it if you're interested in that. Maybe just leave feedback down below. We can, for example, test the CPU water block, which should be a little bit easier than using like a laptop cooling unit. I think especially because it's mixed metals, it's a little bit more complicated, but we can try the other way if you're interested in that. Anyway, we learned that that's something we already learned from Gamers Nexus a year ago. If liquid metal looks dried out, but you didn't disassemble, the performance is still, it's still there. There is no difference. Like after reapplying liquid metal, performance was pretty much exactly the same. We had one degree lower temperature, but that, as I said before, should be measurement tolerance and performance when it comes to Cinebench R20 was exactly the same. Okay, leave some feedback down below regarding the other nickel plating and thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.